Yeah, graph the boss up. We said it, graph the boss up. City's committee, graph for it, you need peace. That war tracks, vandalizing, good no fit. The city of Glasgow is well known for being cultural, contemporary and artistic. For decades, people have been expressing themselves through the medium of graffiti and more recently street art, all the while adding some colour and flair to the grey industrial skyline. Well, six years ago I got involved with graffiti back when I was in school, but my reason for starting graffiti is different from why I do it still to this day. I started off, I come from a town basically where there is no graffiti, no one does art at all. It's, it's football basically, if you don't play football you're out, you're an outcast. Basically do it now for the sheer fact you get to travel the world, you get to meet other people, you get to collaborate and it's not about the, you know, your name now, it's just about meeting people. That's the main reason I do it now, just to sure, keep getting better at my skills. There is a large scene in Glasgow and an ever-growing support for street and graffiti artists with shops selling all the materials they need and dedicated art galleries that cater for contemporary and urban artwork. But is there a difference between vandalism and art? Anybody can pick it up and do it, and it's someone's own perception, like of what they think is the difference between like vandalism, like graffiti. I really think it's down to someone's own interpretation of how they use the sort of products and the sort of things that are out there. Graffiti, vandalism, and street art it is it shares the same kind of principle that it's a lawless art form. When I say that, I don't just mean the fact that it can be illegal. It's the fact there's no limit to an artist's palette. I've seen people use Legos artworks, people use tiles, cement, I've seen people use just crayons on wall, chalk, everything, every kind of media possible. It's, it's possibly why I like all the kind of art critics don't like it. It's got no limit. Graffiti and street art, when it's on the streets and it's illegal, is vandalism. Like, it is. But I think but. <laughs> it's quite interesting, so like some people are out there trying to damage something so like they're angry or they're mucking about or they, what, for whatever reason they do want to damage something or kind of harm, harm it or whatever. But there's a lot of people out there that that isn't their aim, you know? So it's more that they want to make their mark and it's almost a byproduct that it then is vandalism. With costs of cleaning graffiti from the walls of Glasgow totaling £1 million a year, do the council see the artistic side of it? Street art uh, is not endorsed as far as uh, we are concerned. It is uh, vandalism, uh, and vandalism is what is termed along as a signal crime. Uh, what a signal crime? It's really just crimes, which has given a fear factor. Whereas if they start to appear in the areas, then that's a signal for, I suppose, antisocial behaviour for an area being run down. So we're very much aware that where a graffiti will appear. Uh, then quite clearly it'll have a negative impact on that community. Street art in recent years has exploded in popularity due to the success of artists such as Banksy, but is the mainstream factor a good thing? People obviously like the Banksy effect or whatever, but like you can't you can't deny that he has brought the whole thing to the fore to the general public. And made it all a bit more acceptable and uh, and, um, accessible, accessible as well. and, al and also just sort of legit or whatever for the general public, for people to be like, oh actually, do you know what, I quite fancy having a bit of that. And so I think, I think it's good, you know. Yeah. I definitely think that it's for everyone. If, you know, pe every, everyday artists, you know, come in and they might have just you know, they might have been drawn all their life and they kind of, they pick up a can or a different style of pen rather than, you know, like a pencil or something and they can you know, they just try it sort of, it's just different mediums sort of thing. Um, I think anything becomes mainstream at the end of the day. We couldn't do what we do and therefore provide an income for the artists that we try and support if the general public wasn't aware of the movement of street art. Why should they just be stuck working desk jobs and uh, stacking shelves? I mean, it's, they should be getting paid for their passion. Glasgow City Council has recently tried a new incentive of commissioning graffiti artists to create murals to promote Glasgow, such as the works of Sam Bates. And Sam Bates is commissioned to do that work. You know, it's looked at very closely where the work is taking place. Uh, and generally it's been areas where we have had issues with antisocial behaviour and graffiti. Uh, and what we've discovered is that by doing that artwork, then it seems to stop the antisocial behaviour. Generally speaking, yep, it has been very positive impact for the, the city. This however raises the question, 
Would the reintroduction of legal walls to the city also have this positive impact? I was into graph sort of mid to late 90s, that's kind of when I got into it. And uh, there was definitely, I mean there's less writers, but there was definitely notably less tagging when there was legal walls. The new set of generation of kids would then look up to this standard and would stop spreading bad graffiti and start doing good works, really bringing positive reactions from the general public. If you were to ban spray paint, people will just use chalk markers. Either way, it's not going to stop. So you've got the choice of either encouraging good graffiti or bad graffiti.